G'day, uh, my name is Dimitri. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to repair a Toshiba broken power socket. And as you can see, it is a little bit damaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you down a little bit closer and we're going to go step by step uh, quite quickly, but it's all recorded on video so that you can watch it. All right, come down here. Okay, so the first thing always is to remove the battery. So I'll just remove the battery, get that out of the way. And next thing will be to remove RAM, hard drives, anything that's easily removed. Put it aside. All right, so it's important that you start putting your screws into containers. So there's one screw here, and that hard drive just pops back. And it's never as easy as it seems. There's already something blocking this. Um, something's not right. Ah, it's a DVD drive. Okay, so we undo this one. So happens that I have one of these little paperclip tools and that allows you to open the DVD drive and slide it out. And then in this laptop you can take the hard drive out. So we're going to keep this bucket of screws for everything in the top that we're going to do. So now what we want to do is just go around, take out all of the screws on the bottom. Now generally what we'll need to do is we'll need to remove the keyboard. So there should be usually a screw or two holding the keyboard in. Sometimes you've got to push it through. Every laptop's different. Okay. So once we can get the keyboard off, I'll just remove that hard drive out of there. Put it aside. And that's all of the screws out. So I'm just having a good look it's always a good idea just to double check you've removed all of the screws and here's one more screw that I've missed okay so what we'll do is we'll put that set of screws aside so there are all of the screws for here and now what we want to do is have a look at this keyboard. Okay, so, so I've just lifted up here. Now I'm gonna go along.
we got the keyboard out with considerable effort. These plugs you sort of just lift up, take the keyboard out, get rid of it. Okay, so there'll always be a few keys up the top here. So what we want to do is get our container, and our screwdrivers, and just pull all of these screws out. I like to put them in this little part here, then I can put some more screws over here. What we'll need to do is we'll need to go through and just remove any little connectors. So you gotta sort of be a little bit careful with this sort of stuff. I'm still a little unsure about this laptop, how she is going to come apart. Okay, there we go. So just got to be really gentle with this type of unit, so every laptop is different. Okay, so let's zoom you in. So here we have the offending part just here. So the good thing about Toshiba's is the, the socket is generally okay. What happens is the plastic all around it breaks. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically bring it back up and um, use some glue to get into it so um, I was told that this customer was in India when it happened in India they said just use some blue tack so what I'm doing is just removing blue tack now in computers there's always uh, situations where you oops where you come across certain instances that is a first and Bluetooth a uh, blue tack in the socket of a power supply is a first for me. Oh what's the time? Twenty and so I'm just trying to pull out any blue tack that's in there because the blue tack could cause intermittent connection problems. I believe blue tack will be non-conductive, so it will not be good for, look at that, poking it through, non-conductive for electricity. And I got one laptop behind me that has a fried circuit board. Yeah, If you look where my thumb is, come on, focus. That there is a burn mark. And you can see that the bottom of it, there's no burn marks. That burn mark is inside. And if you follow, let me just zoom here. If you follow it, it goes to the power connector. So I'm told there was some type of bright flash in the house where this was. And next thing you know, the laptop doesn't work. Okay, so we don't want that to happen to this laptop. So we've just cleaned out the blue tack. And it looks to me as though it goes into there. So what we're gonna do is get the cable. And we're gonna check that it plugs in. So it looks like that's where it goes. So I would have expected it to. Anyway. 
I would have expected it to go in further, but I can tell by the grooves that that's just where it goes. Oh no, that goes in most of the way. Alright. <coughs> so I'll just push that aside. And um, depending on the country you're in, you'll need to use some type of glue. So I use Araldite. So it's a two part epoxy resin or something like that. Um, and so we mix it up, there's a bit of globby stuff there. And so I just mix it up. Sorry, it's white on white and clear. It's just a something where I mix it up, get rid of the gluggy part. Mix it up really, really well. You need to make sure that it's mixed up 100%. That way it dries with maximum hardness. Just sort of so let's bring you back down in closer. And so I'll put some araldite in this guide, araldite in this guide. Put some araldite down the bottom, not that there's much for it to hold on to, but you know the more the better. And then chuck some on the bottom of this. On the side. And okay, then we carefully put that in there and then I'll just try and smooth out the arrow light just around it just to try and give it as much strength as possible and then we throw that stuff away um, and what I will do <coughs> I do suggest caution in this type of situation is that you need to hold it down in there. And so sometimes what I will do is I'll put the plug in there, make sure there's no araldite inside it. You don't want to glue the socket in there. And then it's just a matter of waiting. So I'm just trying to find a couple of items to stick underneath it just to hold it. Up. So I just want it to stay in there. So it's going to take a few minutes to glue. And um, what I'll go do while that's waiting is I'm going to go turn the air compressor on. And I'm going to blow out the dust in the cooling system. So while we have access to the cooling system, there'll be dust blocked inside it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow air into it and that'll blow all the dust out of it. So I'll go turn the compressor on. This should be glued in a few minutes and then we'll put it back together and hopefully it turns on. What I didn't notice at the beginning was that the wire to the back of the socket had broken off due to all the movement. So what I've done is I've resoldered the wire back on to the rear of the power socket and that will fix the broken connection. Okay, so now what we're going to do that the socket is over here still drying we're going to put it back together so we'll clean the dust out of it First thing to do is to
So now it's just a process of uh, putting the screws back together. So I put the ram in. So I'm putting the uh, small screws just at the back here in first. So generally there'd be a couple of different types of screws. Now I'm just putting in all of the uh, big screws. Uh, so there's quite a few, so I'm just uh, doing this as quickly as I can. Uh, put in the hard drive. Uh, in this model, you need to put the hard drive in before you put the DVD drive in. Insert the DVD drive and there's always a screw at the bottom just to hold it in place. Put on the back cover. Push it down, make sure it's flat. Put the battery in. And plug the power in. And as you can see that the charge light is on, so it's receiving power. And do a wiggle test, feels nice and solid. Um, if you wiggle it and the power goes off, then there's still a problem. And if it turns on, that's a bonus. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it back off because we need to put the keyboard back in. Because the keyboard's so difficult to remove, I've just left it out to make sure it's uh, turning on. So the first thing to do is to connect to the keyboard. So generally the keyboard will have like a position like this that the cable will be pre-bent so that you can put it back in. So it's quite important that you put this in correctly first time. So it should just fit in there nice and perfect. Push down, push in a little bit, and then you can lever it down and that'll hold it in. All right, so this keyboard has some tabs up the top, as you can see. And so in this situation, I'll put the tabs in first. So top of the keyboard in. And then you just press all around the sides and the bottom and you'll hear the click, click, click as the keyboard just uh, clicks into place and holds itself in there. And so just double check everything's clicked in quite, quite well. Make sure it's flat. Put the battery in. And so the battery must be flat, so they must have flattened the battery in their last use. So what we'll do is plug this in and hopefully it charges. Uh, battery's flat as tack. Alright, now we've got a solid charge light and it should turn on. And there we go. Thank you for watching.